Hi there, Pete Snow here for Xylem Rental Solutions, and today we're talking about variable speed pump performance curves. Now, pump curves can be confusing, and adding variable speeds just complicates things even more. The pump you see behind me here is a 6-inch diesel-powered portable pump, which can operate at different speeds by adjusting the throttle. So let's look at this pump's performance curve. Whoa, <laughs> that's a lot of curves, not to mention lines. But what does a variable speed pump performance curve tell you? Well, basically two things. First, the ability of that pump model to achieve flow. And second, to overcome resistance, or head as it's commonly called. Now, there are two scales on every pump curve. Let's take a look at them one at a time. The first is the flow scale, which tells you how much water this pump can move. This performance curve shows flows ranging from 0 to 2300 gallons per minute, or about 500 meters cubed an hour, 145 liters per second. The second scale is resistance, or total dynamic head, which shows just how much resistance, or head, that the impeller can pump against. That scale is either in feet, as you see here on the left, or meters over on the right. Now that takes care of the lines, but what's with all these curves? Let's take them one at a time. To start with, there are a set of curves that drop as they go from left to right. Now each curve represents a speed of the impeller and the ability of the impeller to overcome resistance or head at a given flow. I'll highlight the 1800 RPM curve as an example. Looking at the red vertical lines as the flow increases, the impeller loses the ability to overcome resistance. That's one thing to look at a bunch of lines on a curve, but let me show it to you in real time using real water. Think of a garden hose. If I hold a garden hose vertically with normal pressure from my house, a full flow of water will go up against the force of gravity and then fall to the ground. Here's a short video of me doing exactly that. The water is flowing up, overcoming gravity resistance to about 10 inches or 0.25 centimeters at full flow. But if I put my thumb on the outlet of the hose, the flow is restricted or reduced. And the result is that the lower amount of water is able to overcome much more resistance. Watch another short video and note the house on the left my house actually, and you see the reduced stream of water going much higher, or in pumping terms, against more resistance. The energy of the water in the hose didn't change. What changed? The lower amount of water weighed less. I mean, a hundred gallons weighs a lot less than a thousand gallons just in sheer weight. At a reduced flow, the weight of the water being pumped is less. At higher flows, the weight of the water is more. Think of baseballs and bowling balls. I can throw a baseball in the air really high because it doesn't weigh that much. But if I try to throw a bowling ball up in the air vertically using the same amount of energy, that ball isn't going nearly as high. Why? Because of weight. My energy didn't change when I threw the baseball or the bowling ball, just like the energy in the impeller didn't change. So with a pump curve, as flow increases, weight increases. Baseballs and bowling balls. Here's another short video that shows just that. Watch my house line on the left. See the peak of the roof? Now, as I slowly remove my thumb from the hose, the arc of the water decreases as flow increases until my thumb is completely off the hose and I'm at full flow. The video is moving from left to right to show the dropping arc as flow or weight increases. That's a pump curve. Now, pump curves also have limitations. The yellow lines that I'm highlighting here show the minimum and maximum flow limitations for this model pump. The important thing to know about variable speeds is that maximum speed is not recommended for continuous operation. Well, think of the tachometer and the engine in your car. Can you drive around all day with the engine running close to redline? Sure. Is it possible? Yes. Is it recommended? Well, 
I think you'd be shortening the lifespan of your engine if you did. And the same applies to pumps. So what's the rule of thumb for variable speed pumps? It's this, operate at 10% less than the maximum published speed curve for continuous operation. For this model, highest published speed is 2200 RPM. 10% of that is 220, subtract 220 from 2200, and you get 1980, or a little less than 2000 RPM. That would be the maximum safe continuous running speed. Now the last set of lines are the efficiency lines, which run perpendicular to the variable speed curves, a couple of which I'm highlighting right here. The highest efficiency is in the middle to the near right of the curve, and for this model that's about 66%. Now you can see the efficiency drops as you go to the left and to the right of 66%. And at lower efficiencies, more fuel will be needed to pump the water, comparatively speaking. Now the green shaded area shows the best operating area for this pump, which will provide better efficiency, lower cost of operation, and give more stable running, resulting in less wear and lower maintenance costs. The last bit of information for this video is hose or pipe diameter. Although this is, model is a 6 inch pump, maximum practical flow in a 6 inch diameter hose is just a little over 1000 gallons per minute or 230 meters cubed an hour, 64 liters a second. For this pump to achieve flows in excess of that, 8 inch diameter hoses would be needed on suction and discharge. But that's the subject for an entirely different video called Choosing the Right Diameter Hose. So let's summarize. Here are the four rules of thumb for understanding variable speed centrifugal pump curves. First, as flow increases, the ability to overcome resistance decreases. Second, variable speed curves show the impel's performance at different speeds. Third, best pump efficiency occurs in the center to the near right side of the performance curve. And finally, for continuous running, operate no higher than 10% below maximum published speed curve. Hopefully this information will help you have more reliable and cost-effective portable pumping. If you'd like more information about portable pumps, contact your Xylem Rental Solutions pump expert. For Xylem Rental Solutions, I'm Pete Snow. See you next time.